welcome back to episode six of reusable space program you find Scott Kerman in orbit of the moon let's see what happens well Scott Kerman is orbiting the moon he's you know he is now he's quite happy with himself he is the the greatest the most amazing pilot that has ever been out of the two pilots that he knows because Nakot has not been to the moon and he is the first and he will be telling everybody that um However, his job is not just to go there. He has to collect some science. So we basically spend the next, I don't know how long, with 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 Scott just going around the moon. Now he's on pretty much an equatorial orbit, which means we, we're limited to the different biomes of the moon that we can get. And we also are limited with what we can actually collect because of how advanced our science is. So primarily we're looking at EVA reports. We're looking at temperature, pressure, possibly if we wanted to, Mystery Goo and, and Science um, Junior. However, the big problem is, you know, Sean is not a scientist, so we can only use those things once. In an ideal world, I'd have probably brought Scott up on this mission. However, I'm pretty sure Sean would have gone completely crazy if, if Scott had got to go to the moon before him. He can just about deal with a pilot going first, but a scientist, oh no, not going to happen. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to speed you up perhaps of this because it, it is just a case of cycling through what you're doing. Um, You'll notice that our orbit is actually quite uh, elliptical um, and that means we can actually get high and low but it also means that at certain times I'm actually quite far away from places. Um, what I would like to do is, there we go, we needed to just test the engine. Now this was actually the main reason for this, this mission was because we got a large bonus for testing that little tiny engine in there. You notice I've actually mounted it inside the bay. I could have used it as its main, main thruster but um, I wanted to design this craft in such a way that in my head we could actually reuse it in reality. So if I bring this back down, I want to be able to basically reuse this craft with just modifications. And, and that small engine is not really suitable for what I want to achieve. So we're actually going to look at right how we're going to get back now. We, we don't want to come too steep into the atmosphere. Um, we don't want to go straight into descent because we don't we don't have a heat shield and we've got a lot of mass behind us. And that is a problem. Um, so we've just done a little bit of playing around. We're going to continue to get some science though. We're going to, you know, we've looked and made sure that we probably have enough Delta V if I really wanted to, to, to do this. Um, and we can, we can now, I'm, I'm comfortable. So we're just checking out the science while we're doing stuff. There we go. Bit of a temperature scan. That's always nice. We'll keep that and pressure scan. We'll have that as well. Um, importantly, Scott, because he is now, sorry, Scott, Sean, because he has now uh, progressed. He has now got that ability to orientate the craft automatically, which makes this whole job just a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to use maneuver nodes for this point. You could actually do it, do it manually. Um, you know where your prograde is and you can do all that sort of stuff from prograde. We're looking to basically accelerate out of the moon, but in such a direction that we actually slow our velocity around curbing. So there we go. We're going to do our burn and we're hoping that's going to flip us out of the sphere of influence of Kerbin. There we go. And we can now see, yep, we're going to be a leaf in, sorry, sphere of influence of the moon. So we're now going to be there and we've got a little bit more. So we're just going to run the engine just a little tad because I don't want to, I don't want to go too deeply into the atmosphere, but I need to hit it. I'm looking at about 50 to 50, well, 55, 60 to 50 is, it would be ideal for me. Um, so 50, 55 is my is my optimal level i really want to go about 55 uh, primarily because i want to scrub speed off i don't want to come too far out towards the moon again this is going to take some time though you know um if i'd had a, a little fold away um heat shield i'd be tempted to go a little bit deeper and actually possibly do it in a single a single single hip but we've got a lot of weight behind this rocket in, in an ideal world, what I would actually do is actually make this top component smaller. Um, but this is about as much as I could get away with. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. We've got our, our extra fuel if we need it. So we've got that there. We can still go through and see if we've got any more additional science we can collect, if there's anything else I want while we're doing this. And, and this is very much about collecting as much science as possible. So, you know, Sean is not the biggest science fan in the world but he does know he's got a job and he knows that actually if he gets as much science as possible he's more likely to be allowed to go on other missions and he's he's eyeing up minmus now he's also aware of the fact that actually just orbiting the moon is not that impressive 
it's actually better to have landed on it. And he, he sees that as an opportunity now. So we've got our craft back. We got our world first because we've returned from the moon to Kerbin. Now, the booster that got us up here is actually just floating around. And I thought I'd just show you its re-entry now because, um, you know, we are a reusable program. So when we detached it, it's got a probe core, but also it activated its parachutes and it had its bottom, um, its bottom storage unit open. So the parachutes are actually engaged and available. And you'll see because of the way it's weighted, it's coming in engine first. There is no fuel on this craft anymore. We, we had a little bit, we could have used it to, to deorbit a little bit, but again, we're aiming at about, you know, a, a 50 kilometer sort of height, and then we're just gonna let it pull itself in. There's a little bit of heat builds up, but the engine is taking the majority of that heat. We've, we're coming in nicely. And there we go, drugs, shoots, pull out, our normal parachutes come out. I'd have preferred to land in water, ironically, with this one, because of this. We're actually lucky we didn't hit the mountain in many ways. Um, we're now slowing down. You can see we're down to below eight meters per second, which is nice. We're actually gonna hit down. I think we actually ended up hitting down at around about seven, six to seven. The fairing on the end there is is what would have covered the engine on the on the lunar craft. So it's reasonably strong. It's designed for this, I think. <laughs> and there we go. And we just rock it over nicely. So we can reuse that. We can pick it up and reuse it. We've got our first stage that we landed just beside the, uh, the pad. So that's on parachutes. We can use that. Now, can Scott bring the actual main craft back? That's the question. This is this is a lot of energy. You can see we're coming in and it may not seem like much, but we've got two and a half thousand meters per second and we're still got a long way to go. We're going to be accelerating that amount of Delta V when we hit the atmosphere is going to be high. It's going to get faster and faster. At this sort of level, every meter per second actually counts. Um, we're lucky we're not in we're not in a an interplanetary situation. We're not we're not going to lose our orbit. Um, and because we're coming from the moon, as long as we lose some energy, we're not going back to the moon. So that's not a problem for us. We can come around multiple times. So it's better to be safe than sorry on this one. So we're going to come in sort of 50 to 60 kilometer range. We're going to try and scrub some weight off. Remember, we've got all of that fuel pumped into the bottom tank. Um, and we're going to try and get that to hold us down because that 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 capsule at the top is actually quite heavy. All of the equipment at the top of this craft is quite heavy. It's perfect for going up that way, but coming back down, not so great. So when we get down to like the 50, below 60, we're going to start burning horizontally because we want to lose that horizontal speed. I want to try and kill as much speed as possible. And also you can see we're all over 3000 meters per second. If we kept going like that and we went too deep in the atmosphere, we're dead. This craft cannot cope with that. So we're going to burn off that fuel now and we're going to run it down as far as we can we're just going to take as much speed out as possible we're using the orbit effect because we're burning as low to the planet as possible you see we're heading back up now and we could we could if we'd have basically done a deeper dive we could have come down in one go but you can see we're down at 2500 meters per second in effect which is really nice we've taken a big chunk of speed out we're still going through the atmosphere so we're still losing a little bit might not look like it but we're still losing a little bit of speed. So we're gonna just burn a little bit more fuel. Wonderful. Now, you can see we're actually basically managed to pull ourselves into orbit, but our, our periaps is now in the atmosphere. So we're actually doing the equivalent of what we've done in the past, which is brilliant, you know. Um, we, we know we can return this craft from orbit or craft like it. So we're pretty safe now. That first, that first interface is the killer. And we had a lot of lovely fuel left there. If we hadn't had all that fuel left, this probably would have taken a few passes round. But we can just speed up now and get out of the atmosphere. We can time warp around until we get to the next periaps. Um, Sean's loving it, you know. He's he's not actually orbited um, Kerbin before. So he's now getting to orbit. Look at him, he's loving it, loving it. He's getting to orbit Kerbin. Um, and he's can point out now to Nakot. Yeah, I've orbited Kerbin, I've orbited the moon. I am awesome, I am the best pilot that we have. I think I will be going first for all of our missions in future. If he survives, that is. So now we know Nakot's managed to do this in a pretty similar craft, maybe a little bit lighter. Um, can Sean manage it? That's the question. So he's gonna he's down in the atmosphere now. He does have some fuel left. We have to now balance out in in this design, right? Okay, we need to think about weight. We need to keep that weight down the bottom end. So it's all well and good having the fuel or and using it. But if we don't have enough fuel to slow us down enough and then we flip and we burn the parachute off, we got a problem. Now, 
this craft does have multiple parachutes. So it's not a massive problem if we take the one off the nose, apart from the reusability factor. And that is key. I do not want to lose the nose parachute because we haven't lost anything yet. And that would be that would actually that would actually really kill me to have lost the, the nose parachute there. Because it, it, it's not actually needed. I could have just kept it flat. Um, so we're just going to burn a bit more now. We're burning down and we're just taking it now. You can see we're taking it down to sub or we're aiming to get to sub 2000 meters per second. We're now approaching that 50 kilometer boundary. And once we dip below that 50 kilometer boundary, we're going to start to really see the atmosphere start to take some of the energy out of this craft. You can see that our actual orbital speed, even though we're going down and we should be accelerating, is actually staying pretty similar. It's only gaining a little bit. So we're sort of on the brink now. We're on the brink of just being pulled down. And I think we're going to be going in this time. I think this is going to be the one. Yep, there we go. So we're now starting to get the, the re-entry heating. We're going to speed up a little bit. And this is when we have to decide, are we going to engage that extra fuel tank that we've got? We've still got that fuel saved. It's heaping the weight down at the bottom. At least it, I hope it is. Sean's, Sean's like, ooh, this is just like delivering those those, those those tourists. I don't see any different as he sees the, sh the flames shooting up the side of the craft. Um, he's, you know, he's, he's loving it. What he doesn't realize is that the crew back at, at base are actually just amused because, you know what, this isn't that impressive. He hasn't landed anywhere. He's, he's, he's been talking to them. Now, the good thing at this point is, of course, he's got, probably got a plasma blackout. So, uh, yeah, they don't know what's going on. And we're firing an engine. We've decided that at this point we're, we're low enough down in the atmosphere. Our speed's dropping. Um, we're starting to see uh, quite a little bit of glow on our engine. So we're just burning a little bit off. We're going to keep a little bit of fuel just in case, just in case. Keep the weight at the bottom there. Sean, Sean is now, can't communicate with base. He's got plasma blackout in reality. Well, in, in the game he doesn't, but in reality he would have plasma blackout. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of overheating at the top there. So we're just going to run the engine a little bit just to counteract that we want to slow down we can't turn away from the heat we're going to go through it but we can just put a little bit of engine into there just to stop it overheating too much and uh, every time we start to see that heat build upon something we're just going to hit the engines a little bit and hopefully we won't run out of fuel um, and we won't flip around now in an ideal world yo no it's going on off on. that's not the most ideal of opportunities and we can use some fuel to try and we can use the gimbal in the engine to try and pull us around but oh Right, Sean, that was that was not the most uh, professional of returns there. Um, in hindsight, probably should have taken two passes at, at that. We should have probably uh, let our speeds drop down even lower um, uh, on a second pass, and then and then really just would have been it's barely orbital um, for the return. Ideally, long term with this, we're probably going to have to look at wings, but we'll we'll get into that. So parachutes are armed. We're coming through the atmosphere. We're going quite fast because we are quite heavy, and that's why we have the drogue chutes. There we go. And that was lucky that we didn't snap around there. Sean has lost the smile off his face, though, because he's almost got concussion from the amount of force that actually went off there. Um, you can see just how heavy the capsule is and aerodynamic it is. It, it is pulling down even with those parachutes attached to it. Um, and that is where the weight in that in around the the bottom end there in that that spare fuel tank really pays off on re-entry trying to use that um trying to use that whole structure to save yourself basically um i will have to look in the future at some design somehow that actually has some heat shield on the nose or something because it's not going to work otherwise i don't think long term so we're just going to open the parachutes and sean he still seems a little bit calmer than you'd expect for a man that is you know achieved this amazing goal i think he's he's lauded it over the the ground crews so much now about what he's done that he's he's now feeling a bit tired he's actually realized he could have died on re-entry there i think he's he may have had a little insight into not being the greatest kerbal pilot of all time and i think you know hum humility may come to sean no nope, no it's not he's just he's just yeah he's 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 he's, he's looking forward to landing I think I think he's just tired. I think he he still believes he is the best pilot and will no doubt want to go on and on. And I, I it will be interesting to see whether he uh, he where he lands on Minmus first or the Moon first. We will see. So he he tilts the crafters at landing like he's been taught, and there we go. He survived first Kerbal out of Kerbin's sphere of influence in recorded history. We're going to call it. 
and there we go so all that lovely science we have now over 400 units of science oh so much science so much stuff yay and we get we get sean back as well so what we're gonna buy well you tell you what we'll just uh, we'll just select a lot of things and there's a lot to choose from here and it, it is a case of uh where to go i think we have the craft capable capability now to actually probably do minimus and place like that i think ideally nuclear engines would be nice to have um things like that but we will see so while i do this until next time have a great one and we'll see you next time